Hi guys! Welcome sa Engine Nerd Math Channel. Sa video na to ay tuturo ko sa inyo ang capacitors. So kung gusto niyo itong matutunan, just keep on watching. Okay, so ngayon pag-aaralan natin ang capacitors. So ano ba ang capacitors? So, basically, ang kapasitor ay isa rin siyang uri ng passive element, tulad ng resistor. Maraming gamit ang kapasitor sa electronics. So, meron din tayong iba't ibang uri ng kapasitor base sa application nito. So, ngayon, define muna natin ang kapasitors. Kapasitor, it consists of two conducting plates separated by an insulator. It is a passive element designed to store energy in its electric field. So basically, ang construction ng isang kapasitor ay binubuo ng dalawang metal plate. So, itong square na to, metal plate yan, tsaka ito. So, dalawa sila na in parallel. So, usually, ang ginagamit ay aluminum foil. And then, kung mapapansin nyo, meron kang dielectric in between o yung insulator. So, ito yung nagdi-define kung anong type of material yung ginamit as insulator or dielectric doon sa kapasitor. So, pwedeng air, ceramic, paper, at mica. So, para makompute natin yung kapasitans, meron tayong iba't ibang dimensions or parameters na kailangan. Particularly, yung surface area ng two metal plate and then yung distance between the two metal plate at saka kung ano yung material na ginamit natin as dielectric. Okay, so mamaya ituturo ko sa inyo yun. So basically, kung meron kang kapasitor tulad nito at sinuplayan mo siya ng voltage like this, magkakaroon ka ng charge doon sa mga plates niya. So isang positive at isang negative. Tapos yung charge na yon denoted by letter Q, is directly proportional doon sa applied voltage. At yung constant of proportionality ay yung C, which is yung kapasitans. So, Q is equal to CV, where Q is equal to charge, measured in columns or C, and V is voltage, measured in volts or V, and C is the kapasitans, measured in farad or F. So, the unit for kapasitors or unit for kapasitans is farad in honor of Michael Faraday. So, using this formula, Q equals CV, we can solve for C or the capacitance as Q divided by V. So therefore, we can define the capacitance as the ratio of charge on plate of capacitor to the voltage difference between the two plates measured in farads or F. So therefore, 1 farad is equal to 1 column per volt. Okay, so ito yung formula natin for capacitance. So, using this formula, the higher the charge, the higher the capacitance, and the higher the voltage, the lower the capacitance. Okay? Now, although meron tayong formula na capacitance is equal to charge over voltage, hindi nakadepende dito sa charge at voltage yung magiging value ng capacitance. But instead, sa construction niya mismo. So, ito yung magiging formula ang gagamitin natin para mahanap yung capacitance base doon sa mga parameters sa kanyang construction. So, capacitance C is equal to epsilon A over D, where C is the capacitance measured in farads or F, epsilon is the permittivity of dielectric material measured in farad per meter or F over M, A is the surface area of each plate measured in square meters or M squared, and D is the distance between two plates measured in meter or M. So, kung babalikan natin yung figure, yung sinasabi natin doon sa formula na A, ito yung surface area ng two metal plates. Tapos, yung D, siya yung distance between two metal plates. So, ito yun. And then, yung epsilon, siya yung permittivity ng material na ginamit natin as dielectric. So, pwedeng air, ceramic, paper, or mica. So, may kanya-kanya silang value ng permittivity na epsilon. Okay. So, kung i-analyze natin yung formula na to, makukuha natin yung relationship between the capacitance as well as yung mga dimensions ng parameters. So, malaki yung surface area ng metal plates, mataas din yung capacitance. Kung malaki naman or malayo yung distansya ng dalawang metal plates, mababa naman yung capacitance. At syempre, kung mataas yung value ng permittivity ng material na ginamit natin, mas malaki rin yung capacitance. Okay? 
Now, punta tayo sa symbol for capacitor. So, ang symbol ng capacitor ay ito. So, meron tayong dalawang parallel lines to denote na yung construction niya ay dalawang metal plates. And then, meron lang tayong kanyang terminal lead. So, ito yung non-polarized capacitor. Then, meron din tayong polarized capacitor or yung may polarity. So, ito yung symbol niya. Isang straight line tapos isang pa-curb. So, yung straight siya yung positive, yung curve siya yung minus. And then, yung dalawang terminal lead niya. And then, meron din tayong variable capacitor. So, same lang din sa symbol kung ano yung sign ng non-polarized. Nalagyan nyo lang ng slant line with arrow. Okay? So, meron din tayong passive sign convention for capacitor tulad dun sa resistor. So, sabi, if current enters the positive voltage polarity, Like this, so ito yung positive, ito yung minus, and then pumasok yung current dito sa positive. Then, V is positive, or yung voltage dun sa capacitor ay positive, and capacitor is charging. Since sabi ko nga, yung capacitor ay nag i ng charge, nagsa-charge din siya. Okay? Then, if current enters the negative voltage polarity, so this time, itong current ay pumasok naman sa minus noong capacitor, and then lumabas sa positive, then V is negative, and the capacitor is discharging. So, nag discharge naman yung capacitor kapag yung current ay nag-enter sa negative polarity ng capacitor. Okay? So, mahalaga itong sign convention kasi pag nag-analyze tayo ng circuit with capacitor, ito yung gagamitin natin. So, dapat alam natin to Okay? Next, punta naman tayo sa current to voltage relationship for a capacitor. So, kung sa resistor, ang ginagamit nating formula ay yung Ohm's Law para ma-determine natin yung voltage to current relationship ng resistor. Kapasitor naman, medyo complicated kasi gagamit na tayo ng calculus, yung derivative. So, kasi kapag in natin yung uh, Ohm's Law para dun sa resistor, pag in natin yung V versus current ng resistor, ito yung magiging graph niya. Wherein, linear siya, tapos yung R siya yung slope. Kasi parang, ano siya, line siya na yung M mo yung slope. And then, yung X mo dito yung current. And then, yung Y mo dito yung voltage. So, ito yung magiging graph nung uh, characteristic curve nung uh, resistance, which is just a line. Now, kapag mer na tayong kapasitor, ito na yung parang ohms na corresponding sa kanya. Yung current ng kapasitor ay equal sa kapasitance multiplied sa derivative ng voltage dun sa kapasitor with respect to time. So, IC is equal to C dVc over dt. So, where I, C, is the current through the capacitor measured in amps. Vc is the voltage across the capacitor measured in volts. C is the capacitance measured in farad. And dvc over dt is the rate of change of Vc measured in volts per second. So, dito na pumapasok yung rate of change of voltage sa kapasitor. Kasi, in advanced knowledge, malalaman natin na yung kapasitor ay nagre-resist ng change ng voltage. At yung parameter na yon ay nakadepende doon sa kapasitans. Okay? And then, kapag sinod naman natin dito sa formula na to, yung voltage or yung VC doon sa kapasitor, uh, uh, integrate lang natin to both sides. So, ito yung magiging kakalabasan nating formula. Vc is equal to 1 over C kasi tinaspost natin yung C dito so magiging 1 over C na siya and then in-integrate nga natin both sides so parang Vc na is equal to 1 over C the integral of IC dt from T0 to T plus V of T not 0 so itong V of T not 0 siya yung assume initial voltage doon sa kapasitor so kung initially uncharged yung kapasitor automatically equal to sa 0 Okay? So, itong integral na to, ini-integrate niya yung magiging voltage doon sa kapasitor from time T0 to the final time T na chinarge yung kapasitor. Okay? Now, kung ihahalin tulad naman natin dito sa resistor yung graph noong kapasitor, line din siya. Kasi, ang formula niya dito ay IC equals CDVC over DT. It's just that, yung C natin dito, parang siya yung magiging R doon sa uh, voltage current characteristic ng resistor. Siya yung magiging slope. Tapos yung y-axis natin, siya na yung I, o yung current sa kapasitor, at yung x-axis natin, siya na yung rate of change ng voltage doon sa kapasitor. So, DV over DT. Okay, sa so, mapapansin nyo, itong C, siya yung nag 
de-determine ng pagre-resist ng kapasitor sa rate of change of voltage across it. Okay? Now, dumako naman tayo dun sa energy stored and power in capacitor. So, just like in resistor na nagdi-dissipate ng power at energy, meron din tayong energy and power formula for capacitor. So, energy E for capacitor is equal to 1 half CV squared or Q squared over 2C. Where E is equal to energy measured in joules or J, C is the capacitance measured in farad or F, Q is the charge measured in columns or C, VC is voltage measured in V, IC is the current measured in ampere, and then mamaya itong PC which is the power measured in watts. So ito yung formula for the energy. So tandaan lang natin yan. And then yung power naman, just like the usual formula for power, right? Voltage times current. PC is equal to voltage sa capacitor VC times current dun sa capacitor IC. And then, pwede natin i-substitute dito yung formula natin kanina base dun sa voltage current relationship ng capacitor. Pwede natin maging formula for power is CVC DVC over DT. So, tandaan na natin itong mga formula kasi gagamitin na rin ito kapag magsasolve tayo ng energy at power sa kapasitor. Okay? Now, dumako na tayo doon sa characteristics ng kapasitors. So, magsimula tayo doon sa first characteristic. A kapasitor is an open circuit to DC or IC is equal to zero. However, if a battery DC voltage is connected across a kapasitor, the kapasitor charges. So, kung nangyari, meron tayong kapasitor, okay? And then, meron tayong nakasupply na DC source sa kanya. Okay? For a certain period of time na nakakonect yung voltage natin na battery sa kapasitor, then, magiging open circuit na yung kapasitor. So, parang, mawawala na siya doon sa circuit tapos yung current na dadali sa kanya ay syempre zero na kasi open circuit na tayo, hindi na tayo close pero kapag kakoconnect pa lang noong kapasitor doon sa battery, let's say meron tayong switch okay so, naka-open pa yung switch, so kapag kinlose natin to at that instant so let's say meron tayong voltage dito sa battery na V Okay? Macha-charge yung kapasitor at a certain time constant doon sa voltage ng battery. So, hindi siya magcha-charge at an instant. So, hindi magiging V-volt agad yung, drop dito, yung voltage drop dito sa kapasitor. Meron pa tinatawag tayo na RC time constant or yung time na tinitake ng kapasitor para ma-fully charge siya doon sa supply voltage. So, parang ang magiging waveform niya, ganito. Yan, parang exponential. So, maladish nga yung voltage ng battery V at a certain time. So, voltage versus time. Kasi nga, di ba sabi ko, yung kapasitor ay nagre-resist ng sudden change in voltage. So, hindi siya mag-change suddenly. So, hindi pwedeng magkaroon siya ng waveform na bigla siyang mag from 0 volt dahil uncharged siya, hindi siya pwedeng dumirel siya dito sa V volt ng battery. Kasi, yun yung characteristic ng kapasitor. Resist sudden change in voltage. Okay, so yun yung number one. Next, number two, we have the voltage on the capacitor must be continuous or cannot change abruptly. But the current through the capacitor can change instantaneously. So yun na nga yung pinayant out ko rin sa number one. So the voltage in a capacitor must be continuous or cannot change abruptly. So for example, itong voltage ng kapasitor versus dun sa time, pwede tong waveform na to. Continuous siya, so wala siyang break, di ba? Okay? And then, hindi rin siya nag-change abruptly from, uh, let's say, dito sa point na to. Hindi siya napunta agad dito sa point na to, di ba? Meron pa siyang kinlimed na slope na to. And then, hindi rin siya directly bumaba dito ulit sa point na to, kundi meron pa siyang dinaanan na slope pababa tulad na to. Okay? And then, nag-continuous na lang siya mag-flow in this value. Okay? So, continuous yung waveform dapat nung voltage versus time ng kapasitor. So, ito yung impossible. So, sabi ko nga kanina, let's say from dito, tapos automatic na bigla siyang tumaas dito, hindi pwede yun. Kailangan meron siyang specific time para ma-achieve yung final voltage na isusupply sa kanya. So, pwedeng mag-curve muna siya ng pag-ganito hanggang ma-reach niya itong portion na to. Okay? 
So, yun yung characteristic ng voltage of capacitor. But, in the other hand, yung current naman doon sa capacitor ay pwedeng mag-change instantaneously. So, tandaan nyo yun. So, ito, possible to na waveform doon sa current niya, but hindi doon sa voltage. Okay? For number 3, we have, the ideal capacitor does not dissipate energy. It takes power from the circuit when storing energy in its field and returns previously stored energy when delivering power to the circuit. So, take note of the word idea. So, ideally, kapag gumamit daw tayo ng ideal capacitor, hindi raw magdi-dissipate ng energy yung pa or power yung capacitor. But instead, kukuhain niya lang yung energy na yun uh, for a period of time and then, itatransfer niya rin yun, yung energy na yun, sa other components within a circuit after some time. Okay? So, for ideal capacitor, the power is zero. Kaso nga lang, wala tayong ideal capacitor, so meron tayong zero resistance as well as dedication ductance. So, there's no such thing as ideal. Pero kung i-consider natin yung ideal capacitor, wala siyang power or energy na nadidissipate, unlike sa resistor. Okay? So, reserve or storage lang siya ng energy and then after some time, itatransfer niya lang yung energy na yon sa other components, let's say sa isang circuit. Okay? Next, a real non-ideal capacitor has a parallel model leakage resistance. The leakage resistance can be as high as 100 mega ohm and can be neglected for most of practical applications. Ayun nga, so sabi ko nga, there's no such thing as ideal capacitor. So meron tayong mga parasitics na tinatawag. So, let's say ito yung model natin for capacitor. Then meron daw nakakonek sa kanya na leakage resistance in parallel. So, ito yung uh, sinasabi ko na magpapadissipate doon sa capacitor. So, although meron tayong leakage resistance, nami-measure lang daw siya in 100 mega ohm length. So, pwede na natin in-neglect. Pero kung i-consider natin in real life, dapat nagko-consume pa rin yun ng power. Okay? Now, mag-solve tayo ng sample problems para doon sa iba't ibang formula na binigay ko kanina para sa capacitors. Okay, for number one, we have what is the charge stored on a 3 picofarad capacitor with 20 volts across it? How much energy is stored? So for the first question, charge. So using the formula kanina, charge Q is equal to capacitance C times voltage V. So substitute natin yung value. The capacitance C is 3 times 10 raised to negative 9 for pico, right? So 3 picofarad multiplied by the capacitor voltage which is 20 volts. Okay? So using a calculator, masasolve natin yung value ng charge as 60 times 10 raised to negative 9 column or simply 60 pico farad. Okay? Next, how much energy is stored? So since given tayo ng capacitance at ng voltage, Pwede natin gamitin yung formula kanina for energy as 1 half CV squared. Okay, substitute lang natin yung values. We have 1 half multi multiplied by 3 times 10 raised to negative 9 farad or 3 pico farad times the square of the voltage which is 20 volts squared. So using calculator again, masasolve natin yung energy in joules which is equal to 600 times 10 raised to negative 9 joules or simply 600 pico joules. Okay? So, mahalaga na alam lang natin yung formula na binigay ko kanina para masolve natin yung mga ganitong uri ng problems. Okay? Next, we have the voltage across a 5 microfarad capacitor is V of T is equal to 10 cosine 6000 T volts. Calculate the current through it. Okay, so medyo mat lang siya, pero gagamitin natin yung formula kanina na current of capacitor is equal to C dV C dT. Right? So, gagamit lang tayo ng differential calculus. I-differentiate natin itong voltage na binigay as a function of time. Then, multiply lang natin sa capacitance. So, solve natin. So, C is 5 microfarad. So, 5 times 10 raised to negative 6 farad multiplied by the derivative of 
the voltage which is Vt. Ano ba yung derivative nitong 10 cosine 6000T? So, apply natin yung formula for derivatives of cosine as well as chain rule kasi meron tayong function na 6000T inside the cosine. So, parang yung constant na 10, copy lang, multiplied by, derivative muna natin tong cosine, ano yun? Sine right, negative. So, negative, sine, copy natin kung ano inside function na 6000T, then multiplied pa natin sa derivative nitong inside function na 6000T, which is just 6000. Okay? Multiply natin itong mga constant. So, equal yan saan? Negative 0 0.3. And then, multiply natin dito sa sine 6000 T. So, gumamit na lang ako ng calculator dito ah, sa pagmamultiply. Okay? So, therefore, ito yung current doon sa kapasitor. Okay? So, gagamit lang tayo ng derivatives dito sa formula. Okay? Next, we have... Determine the voltage across a 2 microfarad capacitor if the current through it is I of T equals 6 e raised to negative 3000 T milliamp. Assume that the initial capacitor voltage is 0. So this time, gagamitin naman natin yung formula kanina na Vc is equal to 1 over C integral of I dt from T0 to T plus V of T naught. Okay, yung T not natin or T sub 0 is 0 siya kasi nag-start tayo sa uh, time 0 and then yung T natin as is lang na T kasi wala naman binigay na final time. Tapos sabi, itong capacitor voltage initially so itong B of T not natin ay 0 kasi sabi dito sa problem. Okay, so substitute lang natin yung value. So we have Vc is equal to 1 over C. Yung C natin ay 2 microfarad. So 2 times 10 raised to negative 6 integral of I dt. Yung I natin is 6 e raised to negative 3000 T dt from T naught is 0 to T plus yung V of T naught natin is 0 volt. So simplify further, we have 1 over 2 times 10 raised to negative 6 0 to T Tapos, integrate natin tong 6 e raised to negative 3000 T. Itong 6 constant, so pwedeng ilabas lang yan dito. And then, ito na lang problema natin. Ano integral ng e raised to negative 3000 T? So, ano lang yan, ba? e raised to negative 3000 T over negative 3000. Kung ano yung numerical coefficient nung exponent niya. Yun magiging denominator. So, wala na pala to. So, integrate na natin direct. Ha? So, 6 times... 1 over negative 3,000. Then, E raised to negative 3,000 T. Okay? Tapos, evaluate natin from 0 to T. Okay? Ito nga pala, milliamp pa. So, meron pa tayong ito times dito na 10 raised to negative 3. Okay? So, ito, simplify natin itong mga constant sa labas. So, parang... Ano nang equivalent yan? Negative 1. Okay, so parang negative 1. Okay, din na natin isulat. Using calculator, pag sinimplify nyo ito, negative 1. Then, evaluate natin yung itong e raise yung negative 3000 T from 0 to T. So parang e raise yung negative 3000 T minus e raise yung negative 3000 times 0. Okay? Equals, ito, 1 to, so parang negative of quantity e raised to negative 3000 T minus 1. Tapos, volt na. Okay? Or, pwede natin pagbalik ta rin, gawin natin, distribute natin itong negative sa parang positive 1 minus e raised to negative 3000 T volts. Okay? So, therefore, this is the voltage doon sa capacitor. Okay? Next, we have Obtain the energy stored in each capacitor under DC conditions. Okay, so energy. So, ang formula natin for energy of capacitor is 1 half CV squared, right? So, therefore, kailangan natin ng voltage dun sa mga kapasitor. So, meron tayong value ng kapasitan. So, meron tayong dalawang kapasitors. Let's say, ito yung C1 and then C2. 
So sabi, under DC conditions, so hanapin natin yung voltage across dun sa dalawang kapasitor under DC condition. Then use natin yung formula na to para makuha yung energy. So paano natin kukuhaan yung voltage? So sabi, under DC conditions, base dun sa characteristic ng kapasitor, diba, under DC conditions for a long period of time, magiging open yung kapasitor. So kung i-redraw natin yung circuit, magiging ganito siya. So 6 milliamp then the resistor 3 kilo ohm the resistor 2 kilo ohm the resistor 5 kilo ohm copy lang the resistor 4 kilo ohm tapos itong resistor na C1 open na siya kasi under DC condition na siya for a long period of time same as dito sa C2 open na rin siya kasi DC nga tayo so, therefore, ito na lang pala yung magiging equivalent circuit natin. So, hanapin natin yung V1 dito at V2. Ito, naka-float na lang tong 5 kilo ohm. So, parang itong node na to, parang same lang din dito. So, therefore, kung i-analyze natin, yung voltage dun sa kapasitor C1 ay same lang dun sa voltage dun sa 2 kilo ohm. As well as yung voltage dito sa C2, same lang dun sa voltage dito sa 4 kilo ohm. So, ano pa rin nating uh, circuit analysis technique na pwedeng gamitin? So, obviously, pwede tayong mag-current divider na lang. Kasi, di ba ito equivalent sa circuit na ganito? So, parang parallel na lang sila. Okay, ito yung 3 kilo ohm. Ito yung in series na yung 2 kilo ohm sa 4 kilo ohm. Okay, then ito pa rin yung 6 milliamp current source. So, ang gusto natin ay yung current dito sa branch na to. Para mapultipay natin yung current dito sa resistance ng bawat resistor na to. Kasi, using ohms na masasolve natin yung voltage. V is equal to IR. So, using current division. So, hanapin natin itong let's say I na to. I is equal to, matandaan nyo pa, kung ano yung kinoconsider nating branch, yung sa numerator, yung isusulat natin na resistance. So, 3 kilo ohm over yung sum na nila. So, 3 kilo ohm plus sum natin yung 2 kilo ohm tsaka 4 kilo ohm, 6 kilo ohm. Then, multiply sa current source na 6 milliamp. So, using calculator, masasolve natin yung current I as 2 milliamp. Na meron na tayong I, pero gusto natin ay voltage para dun sa formula na 1 half CV squared. So, using ohms law, V is equal to IR. So, for Capacitor 1 or V1, we have the current I, 2 milliampere, times yung resistance natin na 2 kilo ohm para dun sa V1. Okay? Therefore, V1 is equal to 4 volt. Okay? So, kaya V1 is equal to IR kasi same lang naman yung voltage dito sa kapasitor. Dito sa resistor, magiging voltage dito sa kapasitor kasi parallel sila. Same lang din dito sa 4 kilo ohm. So, V2 is equal to 2 milliamp. So, 2 milliamp pa rin kasi nga sabi ko series to, branch na to. So, same sila ng current. Multiply now sa 4 kilo ohm. So, we have V2 is equal to 8 volts. Okay, now, meron na tayong voltage sa bawat kapasitor at meron naman tayong given kapasitance. Doon na tayo sa pinaka-required, yung sa energy. So, E1 is equal to 1 half C1 V1 squared. So, 1 half C1 is 2 milli farad. So, 2 times 10 raised to negative 3 farad multiplied by V1 squared which is 4 volt squared. So, using calculator, masasolve natin yung energy as 16 times 10 raised to negative 3 joules or 16 milli joules. Okay? Same lang din dito sa energy ng capacitor 2. So, 1 half C sub 2, V sub 2 squared. Substitute, 1 half C sub 2 is 4 milli farad naman. So, 4 times 10 raised to negative 3 farad. Multiplied by V sub 2 squared, which is nakuha natin, 8 V squared. So, using calculator again, nakakompute natin yung E sub 2 as 128 times 10 raised to negative 3 joules. Or simply, 128 milli joules. Okay? So, that's it for the computations and different terms and definition for capacitors. So, 
Basically, dapat alam niyo yung characteristics ng kapasitor at yung mga formula na gagamitin sa kanya para meron kayo knowledge kapag magsasolve kayo or mag analyze kayo ng circuit using kapasitor. Okay? So, sana may matutunan kayo sa video na to at maraming salamat sa panunood.